Please, uh, please, madam. We can start that most of them have joined, and the others will be joining shortly. I have informed everyone. Okay, sir. In that okay. Uh, to be part of uh, the orientation program for uh, academic counselor. Murali, the section officer at the Indra Gandhi National Open University. Welcome to the gathering. Madam, you are going to take a look at Okay, good afternoon to all. Now, the virtual program, virtual orientation program for online environment of academic counselors for the proposed LSC at Central Sanskrit University under Regional Center of Cochin is scheduled today. First of all, I welcome our region director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy, to this program. I welcome Dr. Prasida Unnigrishnan, Assistant Director, Dr. Vijay Raghavan. Assistant Region Director, Dr. Jalaja Kumari, Assistant Region Director to this orientation program. On behalf of IGNO, I welcome all the participants, those who have already joined to this program. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Actually, we are really grateful to acknowledge the role played by uh, Professor Narayanan, who is also with us, in uh, facilitating the visit report uh, for uh, the establishment of LSE at uh, CSU. And uh, uh, actually, the one of the things which we were under process, Dr. Prasita Unikrishnan and the Madam Sujini Babu visited uh, Sanskrit University, University and found the physical infrastructure to be suitable for the establishment of LSE. And sir has also given a list of uh, faculty who are on roles at the, uh, at the university. Now they have to be segregated against the various four programs likely to be activated at uh, the uh, university, the Central Sanskrit University. So this program is mainly to uh, orient of what is the role of an academic counselor. In a regular conventional system, we will be talking about the, uh, um, the, the more like a mother uh, cat taking care of the small kittens. So wherever it, the kitten has to go, it will be dragged by the mother uh, cat. Whereas in distance learning, we uh, more than the teaching role we have sometimes we have to play the role of a counselor in the sense where you will uh, see student coming adult learners coming and sharing their problems more rather than what is the difficulty of them in studying the content of the uh, academic transaction so we have to play both the role of a tutor and also a counselor that's why in the faculty in distance learning system is called as the uh, academic counselor and uh, the academic count, the counseling system and the learning system in distance learning system as such in an open and distance learning institution or a distance teaching institution is such it is more like a small uh, monkey clinging to the mother monkey so the small monkey is the learner and the mother monkey the role may vary sometimes it will be the coordinator sometimes it will be the academic counselor but in all times Wherever the mother monkey jumps, it is up to the part of the small monkey to cling to the mother monkey and fulfill the prerequisites. So this program of empanelment of especially academic counselor on the online portal, as we all are aware, our, the government policy is to ensure that we are going to enter the digital world already. And from 2019 onward, this empanelment of academic counselor is being done online at Indra Gandhi National Open University. And so when we are sending the hard copy of the MOU, the coordinator's profile and the list of faculty on roles at CSU, it becomes mandatory for the university, both at CSU and also at IGNU and 
to upload the academic counselor biodata format in the online portal for each program separately. So this program will uh, yeah, will have one of the objective of it, and also we will be talking about the internal and external assessment of IGNO, so that we will be able to know. And we, you should, all of us are uh, the guys for the government policy of moving into the new education. So matters a lot. So uh, the uh, the academic bank of credit accumulation, the subsequent new normal situation uh, prevailing, which will help us to reach out to many uh, learners, is has to be explored. So now I request uh, Dr. Jalja Kumari Ma'am to take the uh, floor and uh, share about. Um, a uh, brief and then oh, um, the subsequent sessions madam will introduce over to dr chalga ma'am ma yes ma'am yes thank you ma'am uh, uh, let me ask uh, narayan sir one thing ma'am yes ma'am please yes, yes uh, sir uh, are you sure that you Ha, please, please tell, please tell, madam. Ma'am, Jalja, ma'am, you are, you have to unmute yourself. Ah, okay, 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 ma'am. Sir, all the approved academy, proposed academic counselors have been joined. Are you sure? And not all that uh, that I have informed everyone, but uh, some uh, might not have joined. Uh, I have already joined this uh, this time also, and uh, most of them uh, that they. Just like Giridhar Rao, he knows that how to upload uh, okay. uh, uh, this online uploading. He knows all and he team also. And uh, some have not joined, they are busy with some other work. Anyway, no problem uh, that uh, most of them are listening. That uh, at least uh, eight of them are here, I think. Eight or nine, nine, nine not nine, ten, ten people are here. Ma, whether they are trying to get in, I was doubtful. If so, I'm yes, yes. we may allow. Already we are allowing. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Job, I, I can be, uh, it is being dealt with. Okay. And as uh, Professor Narayanan has requested, we'll start the program. Any of recording will be made available and I will upload it in the YouTube channel. Whoever wants to view it, they can view it and be benefited. And always, yes. okay. we, and I have already requested uh, I rather assured Professor Narayanan in that meeting we held last week that for any uploading matter also, we the center will be with them till the end of the establishment. That assurance. Okay. So we, okay. Thank you. We thank will you. start with the agenda and we'll move ahead, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. As per the agenda, thank you. Uh, we are we are going to start our technical sessions one. In the technical session one, uh, it is. Uh, Assigned for Dr. Prasida Unnation, Assistant Regional Director, Assistant Director of uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University Regional Center, Kochi. And uh, Madam was uh, actually involving the initial activities of this thing, the background works she was doing, and she has visited the uh, Central University campus at Guruvayur also. And uh, she, I think uh, more than that, she is very much aware of the academic counselors, how many people are there to uh, be proposed, and uh, all the other. Um, things uh, which are facilitated by the Central University campus. And uh, Madam can uh, tell the role of academic counselors in student support services. That will definitely give uh, a prerequisite to the academic counselors proposed for getting into uh, this activity. Madam, please, Dr. Prasida Unikrishni. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. A very good evening to one and all uh, to this uh, academic counselors orientation session. Uh, first and foremost, let me welcome each one of you to this uh, session. Uh, I'm sure uh, Narayanan sir, uh, on that day we had met and uh, many uh, aspects we had discussed on that day itself uh, about, but the role of academic counselors is something uh, which needs to be oriented about to all the academic counselors who will be empaneled for IGNO. Uh, to pro provide student support services to the students. So this session would mainly be focusing about the uh, skills and knowledge 
and uh, maybe the know-hows, uh, what is required for being an effective academic counselor uh, at IGNO. So first, uh, I would just like to give a brief overview about IGNO and the open and distance learning system because uh, we uh, IGNO is presently having two systems, that is open and distance learning. online mode as well so there are some programs which are being, uh, also being offered in the online mode of uh, system so now uh, presently these programs are being offered both in the online as well as the ODL system so distance education is basically uh, means the learners are studying at a distance wherein uh, the open and distance learning system is a system of education wherein teachers and le learners they need not be present either at the same place or same time and the, there is a flexibility with respect to modalities, timings of teaching, and without compromising on quality. So that is the essence of an open and distance learning system, which we often refer to in IGNO. And as a part of this open and distance learning system, uh, academic counseling is a very, very important activity of the learner support services. And uh, it is basically the key uh, to the success of learners who are studying in this ODL system, I must say. So uh, basically, Narayanan sir and other academic counselors who are listening to this session, you all are, are going to be the empaneled academic counselors uh, of the programs, which of the Sanskrit programs, which are going to be offered through IGNO. So uh, I have just seen, uh, uh, given you a picture about an academic counselor who is teaching in a face-to-face -face mode, and an academic counselor who is interacting with his or her students in a virtual mode, especially in the uh, post COVID scenario. This has become a reality wherein academic counseling sessions uh, are both in a hybrid mode, I must say, uh, both in the face to face mode as well as a distance mode, uh, as well as in the online mode is very much prevalent, especially now we are giving academic counseling more in the online mode so change uh, in fact as an academic counselor your role would be to change according to the situations and circumstances so if as spencer johnson has rightly said if you do not change you become extinct so we have to adapt ourselves to the latest technologies and to the latest happenings in the education sector as well so that we can change accordingly to the needs of the learners. So we have to adapt ourselves to the needs of the learners. We all know that is an increased use of ICT tools in the post COVID scenario, isn't it? Uh, earlier, the academic counseling sessions used to be offered only in the face to face mode, but presently it is being offered both in the uh, face to face as well as the online mode. So there is an increased use of ICT tools. So as an academic counselors, you also need to be aware about the ICT tools uh, which are available for interaction with your learners. So already we are interacting in a virtual mode now. So that itself shows that we are uh, getting adapted to the new mode of uh, communication uh, with our uh, learners. So here there is a picture. Uh, can you please identify can I, the difference between these two pictures? Uh, one is a learner. Uh, both these pictures of the are of learners who are studying in maybe the ODL mode. Now, uh, both are the images of learners who are studying. So, what is the difference which you observe in both these pictures? Can anyone please unmute and just say? Any one of you? Age. Yeah, tell me. Age. What do you one see? Has, one yes, has tell me. And another one is looking young. Okay, okay, that's the difference. See, what I wanted to show you with this picture, uh, thank you uh, for the response. What I wanted to show you is in IGNO, the learners are a more of an heterogeneous group. We have different forms of learners. He may be a young learner. He may be an old learner. Okay, so you will be having students who may be of 18 years of age who are coming to you for study or 
you would also get learners who would be above 70 years of age. So it is the heterogeneous group which you have to cater to. Uh, means all sorts of learners uh, will be coming to you uh, of varying age group. So that is the difference which I wanted to highlight through this picture. So these are the characteristics of a distance learner, especially uh, the learners which are coming are all part-time learners. They are adult with family and social responsibilities. Uh, they have a varying age group. Like I said before, they will be 18. There will be minimum 18 years of age and maximum there can be learners of any age group. And the gap between the present and uh, they would also be having a gap uh, between the present education and the past experience of formal education. Like he may have a gap in between uh, is in his studies as well. Also, they would have less contact with the institution and fellow learners. So these are some of the characteristics of the learners who would be coming to you for study. So who is basically an academic counselor? Uh, basically, an academic counselor is one who takes counseling sessions. Uh, a person who takes the counseling sessions is called an academic counselor in igno terminology and uh, normally in a regular system we call them as teachers but in a, a distance mode we call them as academic counselors so what is academic counseling at igno uh, academic counseling is basically a combination of general counseling and tutoring like uh, uh, in general counseling you would be giving the general information uh, about igno programs about other things but tutoring would be specifically focusing on the subject which you would be teaching like you would have opted for certain uh, specialized areas uh, of sanskrit which you would be an expert in teaching so that uh, role of yours is called as tutoring but apart from being an expert in the subject area uh, of which you are teaching you also have a role of general counseling to the students so apart from your subject knowledge, you as an academic counselor of IGNO are also expected to do general counseling. Like uh, what is the, uh, some student may come to you asking about uh, the structure of the BA, pro, BA Sanskrit program or for any other general information pertaining to IGNO, like there are so many programs being offered by IGNO at present. So. Uh, you as an academic counselor need to be aware about the programs being offered by IGNO, uh, the IGNO structure and how you can guide the students in a better manner. So that all these aspects of general, uh, uh, general forms come under the general counseling apart from the subject specific knowledge which you will be already imparting to the learners. So this academic counseling is basically uh, both of general counseling as well as tutoring. So the role of academic counselors uh, in counseling. See, first of all, when we take a class in IGNO, uh, academic counseling is not compulsory for the learners to attend. So the first class which you take for the IGNO learners is very, very important because the, uh, the first class sets the foundation of whether the students will be attending your future classes or not. So you have to make your first class extremely interesting so that the students regularly attend your next classes because uh, counseling sessions are not compulsory for the learner in a distance mode to attend. So attendance is not compulsory. So your role as an academic counselor would be to develop the motivation, enthusiasm, and study skills of the learner. Uh, like in a regular system, we have a topic and we know that we have to teach this much syllabus to our students in a particular time frame. But in a distance mode, it is not, it is more of an exchange of ideas between the academic counselor and the student. Uh, student studying in a distance mode it's not lecture oriented but it is more of learner oriented like what is uh, like in a particular given topic uh, what is exactly which the learner wants to know or understand or what is that which he is not unable to comprehend there may be some difficult topics in the uh, study materials given which the learner is unable to understand so your role as an academic counselor would be 
to know from the learner which are the difficult topics which the learner finds and how you can better explain it to the learner maybe through a group activity or through using various examples so or activity based also you can make your lectures so that it becomes more interesting for the learner so but it should not be like a typical class wherein you are just teaching about your topic to the students it should be more of an interactive mode wherein you understand what the what is exactly which the learner is confused about the subject and also apart from that some general things which about igno which the learner wants to know from you like the last state of examination how he should be applying for the examination how he should be writing the assignments so all these guidelines apart from the subject you have to give it to the igno learners so the counseling uh, basically is person specific and depends upon the individual learner needs so that is what you need to understand and to update the learners regularly about igno and its operation because once you are an academic counselor of igno you should know about the basic functioning of igno and how igno works and so that you can pass it on to the learners because learners may not only come to you with subject specific queries but they may also come to you with general queries which you as an academic counselor must be able to answer them like uh, you have paid fees for the first year now you have to pay, pay fee for the second year so these all certain basic informations uh, you as an academic counselor need to be aware about so how you can discharge your roles effectively so uh, first and foremost uh, as an academic counselor you need to have a basic knowledge about igno have good knowledge about the subject which you would be teaching you must have uh, all academic counselors while empaneling for uh, ma sanskrit or ma jyotisha uh, many of the academic uh, particular course codes have been given in which you are you have expressed your interest uh, for teaching the students so those course codes, especially for the BA Sanskrit or MA Sanskrit, you should be definitely having a good knowledge about the course. Like you should be able, to, uh, you should be going through the study materials of the Sanskrit, MA Sanskrit of IGNO or the BA Sanskrit of IGNO first. Very nicely, you should go through the study materials so that you can comprehend as to what exactly needs to be taught to the student and you should also have an ability to observe and empathize you should uh, see the learner uh, you should empathize with the learner and not, never sympathize with the learner so that is very very important and you should also have a genuine and sustained interest in the student and as a person further you should also have sufficient knowledge about ict to facilitate the learning at a distance so who is a, uh, an effective academic counselor? Especially I want to explain to you these four, uh, four terminologies which have been given. One who provides a relationship characterized by wage is an effective counselor. So what is wage? Uh, w means warmth. So these are, uh, warmth means the academic counselor should have an ability to communicate personal warmth and make the learner feel welcomed and valued as an individual. Like in the first class which you take as an academic counselor, uh, you can say a welcome hello to all your students and be a part of them, be friendly with them so that uh, even they can feel the warmth of yours. And uh, instead of just saying uh, uh, hello, how are you all doing or a brief greeting also would be uh, good in your first class as an academic counselor so that warmth you should be having as an effect as an academic counselor the next thing is acceptance so as i said before the distance learner comes from varying backgrounds like uh, so you should accept the learners as they are you should not be distinguishing them based on gender race or any other things and acceptance of the person as he or she is uh, without any critical judgment uh, is a key to be, be being an effective academic counselor so accept the learner 
as he or she is. And the third thing is genuineness. All the academic counselor need to be naturally yourself. You should be open, open, open and friendly and undefensive. Uh, so that friendliness uh, and that genuineness uh, should be there within you as an academic counselor. And of course, you can, uh, you should not put a fake, uh, fake personality in front of the learners, but should have a genuine and keen interest uh, to support the learners. So that genuineness should be there within you. And the fourth thing is empathy. Empathy is nothing but putting yourself in other shoes. So the ability to feel, uh, to sense the feelings and experiences of the another person. And so to fully appreciate, uh, uh, appreciate them if you were that person is yet another quality of being an effective academic counselor. So which is a very, very important characteristic which should be having, you should be having as an academic counselor. So what are the skills which are needed for an academic counselor? So first thing, uh, just I would briefly explain it. Uh, first is selecting. So selecting means this is a process of deciding what kind of re response would be appropriate for the learners. For example, if a um, aged person comes to you uh, by saying, I want to do MA Sanskrit program from IGNO. Um, so can I do, if supposing a learner who is an aged person who comes to you and asks, uh, I'm an aged, uh, how can I do, uh, can I do MA Sanskrit? I have these, these qualifications. So as a normal person, what you would respond? Yes, you can do. But being an academic counselor of IGNO, you should be able to offer something more than yes and no. Like you should be uh, explaining to him about the course structure and how he can successfully complete the program. What are the nitty gritties of the MA Sanskrit program? So that is your role to provide something additional to the student. Apart from saying only yes and no to the student. Yes, you can join this course. So you have to reassure your learners. So that is uh, about advising or counseling. That is the first thing which I explained. That is information, advising or counseling. The second thing is listening. So listening by listening, I would, uh, I want to tell you that you should be a very, very good listener to your learners. And that should be like, you should be an active, intelligent listener. Active, intelligent listener means uh, you should uh, uh, be reflecting on the questions. You should ask them open-ended questions. How do you think like you can take MA Sanskrit as your career? So such uh, open-ended questions you should be asking your learners so that it makes them think of what they can do for their future. Similarly, when a learner talks to you, like when a distance learner comes to you and talks to you, please acknowledge them like okay uh, say in between like okay or you should nod your head uh, uh, identifying that you are listening to them so these acknowledgement is also very very important and then reflecting encourage the learner to seek certain clarifications like you can uh, when you are listening you can ask certain questions how can you do this better or what do you think would be the um, uh, interest areas which uh, you would like to do. So certain questions you can, clarifications you can ask and then comes the silence. Silence is something like, uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult skill to incorporate for a uh, academic counselor, but you have to give time to the learners to think. So that silence is also a positive silence. And then comes the structuring part. So <laughs> Having listened to the learner, we need to look for solutions. So like you had to clarify to find out what the learner's needs are. You need to decide on the appropriate action. And also you need to check on the consequences like what academic counselors would do as a result of the interaction with the learner. So what is the action pointer? Like the student would be coming to you with certain expectations, so certain 
action points have to be decided so that you can clarify the student's problem. So these are some of the basic skills which are needed for it for being an effective academic counselor. So what are the responsibilities of an academic counselor? Uh, these are some of the main responsibilities of an academic counselor. Like you need to assist the coordinator uh, as Narayanan sir has already opted for being the coordinator. So you as an academic counselor has to have to assist the coordinator. You have to assist with the evaluation of assignment conduct of the practical examination. But in case uh, these programs do not have a practical component, so there will be no not much of this. Facilitate with infrastructure available, promote distance education. And apart from the uh, uh, self-learning materials, that is the study materials of IGNO, you can also supplement it with various <coughs> reference materials, which may be of interest to the students. So uh, you can supplement the IGNO study materials with various reference materials for the benefit of the students. You can also engage the learners to form groups uh, even academic counselors these days form WhatsApp group of the students so that they can be in continuous stitch, touch with the students in the form of group. And you, should, you can also participate in pre-admission camps. Like as, uh, as you may be knowing, ICNO admissions come twice a year. One is in uh, July admission cycle and January admission cycle. So uh, before this admissions, uh, we can engage in certain pre-admission camps uh, and uh, uh, that will help in getting more and more admission uh, in these programs of Sanskrit. And you should also be providing some uh, certain opportunities uh, to the learners in the subject cho chosen. Like uh, if Central Sanskrit University is, off, uh, is conducting a seminar or a conference, uh, uh, which may be of interest to the students of BA Sanskrit or MA Sanskrit, then you can also <coughs> provide an opportunity to the distance learners also to participate in such seminars and conference so that they can also enhance their knowledge area. So with these words, I just want to uh, say to you that I hope you all are ready to be an IGNO academic counselor. And uh, these are some of the basic uh, nitty gritties which I could just uh, share with you all in this brief time, which was allocated to me. And I'm thankful to all of you for listening to me patiently. In case of any doubts, clarification, would we'll definitely discuss with you in the uh, general discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, you very much. Over to you, Jalja ma'am. OK. OK, Prasida ma'am. Now, Dr. S. Vijayakri is available there, sir. Yeragan sir, are you there? Hello. Yeah, are you? Ah, okay, okay. Good. Sir, yeah, now yeah. I invite you to uh, deliver your portion, uh, role of academic counselor with a special reference to internal and external evaluation of IGNO programs. Yeah. That is what, sir. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. So, so it is a very great moment. Uh, we are having the LSC at the Sanskrit University at Kurvayu. So first of all, we need to see the academic counselor. What is the quality of academic counselor? That is very important. So it is uh, not a teaching. It is a counseling. Uh, the counseling has a uh, lot of interaction within the uh, group of the students. If they have any doubt, or clarification, uh, they will raise the questions that need to be clarified by the academic counselors. So in that case, uh, we are having that uh, evaluation methods, that evaluation method, internal evaluation and external evaluation. So we have the two type of the uh, evaluation, similarly the conventional mode. So internal evaluation, that you know that that is a uh, internal assessment, assessment uh, of the learner by the academic counselors in the way of uh, submission of the assignments. Uh, that assignment needed to be evaluated. 
assignment has uh, 30% uh, percentage of weightage remaining 70% percentage weightage mark for uh, external evaluation external like evaluation that is a theory theory examination so this assignment it is a heart of the system is a two way communications you are communicating the students uh, through the assignment after evaluating the assignment and it needs to be written to the learners with the comments so that remarks as whatever that uh, uh, academic counselor uh, while evaluating the assignments they need to give the comments uh, in the assignment and it should be written to the student so suppose the assignment has written very well you need to mention that also if not uh, written properly that you may give the suggestion in the assignment sheet itself uh, so the student may be corrected later uh, and the assignments need to be submitted maybe through the online mode uh, and also offline also the candidate can able to submit at the lsc uh, but however uh, now we have given the link through the website igno websites through that that the scanned copy of the assignment the candidate able to submit after submission of the assignments the, uh, the assignment must be written by the hand written that scanned it should be submitted through the online that will come to regional center soft copy will come to regional center and we we are separating study center wise and we are forwarding to the uh, the concerned study center for evaluation so the assignment need to be evaluated by using the approved academic counselor only that also the coordinator responsibility to forward the soft copy of the assignment to the approved academic academic counselor of your lsc and that, that within the uh, particular time it mean uh, one or two weeks uh, within the time that assignment marks awards are needed to be entered in the portal the portal which is we are giving at study center level the study center can able to enter the assignment awards and then the hard copy of the uh, awards need to be submitted to the uh, regional center for validation purpose so you aware that the assignment it is a very important one it is a internal evaluation it has weightage of 30 percentage of marks so once that uh, theory uh, result will be declared after incorporating the assignment marks also we are conducting the termment examination of uh, june termment examination and december termment examination this is the external evaluation so however the assignment marks which is incorporated with the theory marks so we are declaring the result within the 40 uh, days after the examination is over so before that everything should be done the assignment marks must be entered through the portal the portal link password everything we will provide to the lsc so that mark automatically will update in the grade card along with the theory marks so so that if suppose the assignment mark is not uh, reflected in the grade card the result may not be completed even the candidate completed the theory examination or theory marks may be they passed so these are all the thing assignments is a heart of the system of the distance mode so at par with the conventional mode what we are telling a conventional mode it has lot of uh, uh, process of study people are telling but that it is uh, it is not less than the distance mode is not less than as compared to the conventional mode that is why these are all the criteria we are having and yesterday also you know the chennai one case some distant education uh, program some uh, court uh, told that the regular mode is uh, uh, some case something it is a negative remark about the distant course immediately ugc replied yesterday itself it is at equivalence at par with conventional mode whatever the program studied by the learner through distant and online mode which is recognized by the ugc as well as distant educational purview so they can able to get the job anywhere so that is a thing that is a main aim so now we can see that uh, internal evaluation already over now external evaluation the external evaluation we say a theory examination the theory examination we are conducting june term examination as well as uh, december term examination 
so now we are uh, conducting the december tenment examination for this the candidate can able to register through the online per course 200 rupees a uh, course fees they can submit through the uh, portal that uh, examination link uh, university will provide uh, i think in the month of uh, november first week uh, 15 days without late fees after that with late fees without late fees uh, the per course is 200 rupees they can be able to register through the online and we are uh, we have been activated around the 13 to 14 examination center uh, in within our uh, jurisdiction rc jurisdiction so the candidate can able to write the examination uh, they are convenience anywhere in india they can be able to write the examination however if they want to write it uh, at trishur they can write the examination in trishur or if they want to write it ernakulam ernakulam also they can be able to register so wherever they can able to write there is no problem similarly the study center also if they would uh, want to change uh, to the some other region so suppose they are enrolled in that your uh, study center they want to change to tamil nadu so they can able to change to tamil nadu through online for that the candidate can able to submit the letter to the regional center so we will process that one even that examination also in case the candidate applied in the uh, kerala region some due to some job purpose they migrated to the some other state so they can approach first of all their state for writing the examination so if there is a place vacant uh, seats are available for writing the examination that regional director can able to permit for the examination so this is a thing so it is a, it is a centralized it means centralized wherever they can go they can write the examination wherever they want to change the study center they can able to change the study center as well as regional center also so this is a thing the tenment examination we are conducting every year to uh, uh, two session every six months we are conducting however the eligibility for writing the examination for degree courses non semester courses one year after the admission semester based program including the certificate program within 6 month the candidate can able to write the examination so within 6 month they can register before that uh, study material if they want uh, uh, university also sending the study material to their address if they want the soft copy uh, e gyan goes is available in that they can able to get the soft copy of the study material for reading purpose uh, i told you that assignment assignment must be written hand written uh, written by hand by the learners so for that the question paper also available in the website igno website the candidate can able to see the igno website to get the uh, question paper for writing the assignment uh, in that question paper uh, every year they are uh, every session by they are uploading in that current uh, question paper needs to be downloaded then Uh, for that question paper answer should be written for the assignment so this is a thing academic counselor is a facilitator of the learning so the things is that you need to maintain the notice board in your uh, study center where the information to be disseminated related to the examination or submission of the assignments and your academic counselor and also the study center functionaries to be supporter the learners so whenever they will come to your study center you have to give that because the first point uh, the st- student can able to meet only the study center if study center having any problem then only the student will come to regional center and we will be shorted out the issue this is a thing so theory uh, examination Uh, this is i told 70 percentage of weightage for theory examination and also the study center need to conduct the practical also practical sessions so some program having the practical the study center uh, will conduct the practical session as per the igno norms by using the approved academic counselors so this is a very essential one so assessment pattern if you see so we are having the assignment tenment examination practical session and even that project also we are having 
these are all the uh, assessment of the learners for the study so you have any doubt uh, any clarification regarding the assignment and examination pattern you may contact me through email also and also my mobile number also will be available so through email or ask question you can able to write it we, we are ready to give the uh, reply or uh, clarification in this record so this is a thing if you have any doubt or clarification you can raise the question uh, the question session will be there thank you thank you very much thank, thank you, you very much for valuable information yeah. thank you sir thank you very thank much thank you sir thank you sir is uh, now this is my turn and uh, in this session uh, we are going to watch or view how uh, this environment process can be done and before that i will uh, let you know what are the uh, different courses of ba sanskrit ma sanskrit ma jyotish and saral uh, sanskrit bodhan that i will tell you before that let me present the powerpoint in this regard one, one second please So the programs, can you see? Yes, yes, madam. Yes. Yeah, ma'am. Okay, okay. So in a brief manner, uh, not in an elaborate manner, in a brief manner, we am telling you what are the programs. Uh, madam Prasida was telling very elaborately about the role of academic counselor and uh, how the assessment mechanism is going on in IGNU that was also delivered by uh, Dr. S. Vijay Rakhman. Now, we may have to focus on the courses. Courses means we mean the papers. So the programs we are going to propose or the proposed programs are BA Sanskrit, MA Sanskrit, then MA Jyotish and uh, a certificate program in uh, communicative uh, Sanskrit language that is Saral Sanskrit Bodhan, SSB. These are the four programs uh, we are focusing on the basis of this we have to Empanel academic counselors also. So at first, all the academic counselors who are proposing should know about the courses in each program. First, I am telling you uh, our programs, our uh, bachelor degree programs, means UG programs are under a CBCS, Choice Based Credit System. You know that uh, all over India, this, uh, this is a uniform pattern or a scheme and syllabus for CBCS programs. And IGRU is also having this scheme under which our program is known as BAG, BA General. But there is the disciplines uh, will be selected by the students, Sanskrit. So the general nature of the program, I will tell you, we have uh, core language papers. The first area is core language papers. Uh, even Sanskrit language paper is also coming, that is BSKLA 135. And then our core papers, their main, main we cannot say because it is BA general, student can uh, select any pro, uh, course as per their choice from the electives. But there are discipline specific core courses. Sanskrit uh, studying students, they are selecting uh, four courses for the first year, as in first semester, they will select BSKC 131, then 132. In the next year, they will select 133 and 134. So these are the four compulsory core purpose of Sanskrit. Then there is discipline specific elective, that is BSKE 141 and 42. Like that, they have to select like other learners or other discipline learners, the ability enhancement. So uh, core language paper, core discipline paper, their uh, discipline specific electives, ability enhancement uh, courses, 
skill enhancement courses and generic electives these are the five categories of selection categories of courses we have put under each program means each program means each program of bh in sanskrit also students have to select uh, sanskrit as the modern indian language then uh, four courses under their discipline main discipline and then uh, two electives under elective uh, discipline specific electives environmental studies one course is there uh, that course is uh, uh, it's common for all not only for sanskrit students it is common for all like that a group of generic elective courses are also given in the prospectus as per their choice students can select courses like that totally 132 credits are there for 3 years this is this is these are the sanskrit courses we have to focus on to uh, take embanelment for our academic courses other courses also may be taken but for i think uh, for the uh, starting of the study center uh, we can at first manage with all these courses and there are academic counselors available in other courses in other study centers and uh, i am not going to deeply in the process of uh, counseling sessions and all because uh, as per the um, changes come or day to day updation of the uh, scheme and uh, norms uh, standard operation procedures of ignu we may change everything that we will give you um, an orientation after embanel after the establishment of the study center now just for embanelling academy counselors i don't want to make you in trouble with the, all the difficult or uh, complications of the processes you focus on these courses for uh, embanelling academy counselors at first for ba program like that the second our choice of our program is ms sanskrit here you know as i say how done it mhk1 msk that is sanskrit sahitya shastram evam sahityam that is mhk1 mhk2 is there that is vyakaran a lot of uh, spelling errors are uh, there in the write up maybe uh, the people or people may not be aware of the sanskrit screen uh, script that is what the reason for that but whatever it may be being the experts in sanskrit you know what i have written so msk2 is the paper that is vyagaran and msk3 is darshan msk4 is um, uh, aadhunike sanskrit sahityam aur sahitya shastra msk5 is um, th this is for uh, some uh, whatever it is i don't know Uh, this uh, MSK six is uh, that is Bhasha Adivad, um, the Rekhan. I don't know, or is it a trouble or uh, spelling mistake or something like that? Uh, MSK seven is also there, Sahitya Shastra, and uh, MSK eight is uh, Samskrita Sahitya. Get the Padya, Evam, Nada, like that, and uh, for all these programs. All the credits are divided into eight eight each. In the Igno Common Prospectus, page number one thirty seven, you can download. You can download from Igno website. You know Igno website uh, address and the link. You know, please download the prospectus first to get a clarity on the courses given in this one and uh, go through uh, the courses each course thoroughly. Then you take a decision. or which course i have to select or i have to be impaneled like that like that you take a decision before that so there are eight courses in first year this msk 1 2 3 5 not 4 but in second year msk 4 6 7 and 8 are given so this is the course wise uh, allotment for first year and second year the next program is ma jyotish this also with eight courses four courses in first year again other another other four courses in second year here mjy 001 2 3 4 these are the courses for first year and for second year mjy 5 6 7 and 8 all courses are of eight credits each 
and totally 64 credits uh, for uh, MA Sanskrit and MA Jyotish. And the last certificate course we are going to propose is MS. Um, sorry, uh, this is Saral Sanskrit both that is communicative Sanskrit. SSB one, two, three, and four. SSB one, SSB two, SSB three, SSB four. Each course is of four credits. These are the papers or courses we have to select. So for BAG Sanskrit program, MA Sanskrit, MA Jyotish, and SS Saral Sanskrit, both it. Like that, four courses are there, four programs are there for us, and for each program, several courses. So we may select academic counselors for each course, at least two. At least two. If more academic counselors available for each course, it is good because they can manage the study activities, learning activities very well. But for getting the study center, for the establishment of the study center, at least two persons should be there for each course, for each program. That is the uh, eligibility criteria for uh, getting the environment of academic comes Elig not eligibility criteria, the rule for the uh, norm for environment. Eligibility criteria uh, is uh, another thing that I will share through um, uh, our email ID and uh, you have to learn very well the eligibility criteria for each course and then a persons can be finalized. So a meeting in between in your institution itself has to be held to discuss on which person is suitable for which course like that. After that, it is better to sit together on a particular day. If all of you are sitting together, I think uh, you can uh, do it together and uh, in one stress, uh, stretch the process of academic counselors and panel through online water will be done. That will be very much easy for us to uh, process the thing. In that slide, I will share you share with you. Please go through that. Better to view slide show from me. So this is the online empanelment portal. This is known as Academic Counselors Online Empanelment Portal. Online Academic Counselor Empanelment Portal of Igno. The link is given in bold letters. That is uh, RSD dot igno dot ac dot in. RSD is Regional Service Division. This Regional Service Division at headquarters is providing the facilities for environment of academic counseling, keeping up of the database of the academic counselors and all that type of works uh, besides the overruling of regional sectors other than that of the higher officials like Vice Chancellor and all. And regional, under Regional Service Division, we are processing this academic counselors environment portal and other things. So all the activities of regional center is uh, uh, submitted or uh, we are getting the approval from the uh, immediate higher authority, competent authorities, RSP. So this is the home page. This is a screenshot, not the page. This is a screenshot only for the PPT. You can see this home page about you know, support, you know, prospectus and everything and this link is available in the home page itself home page of igno website so this you see this counselor login is here there the first option is a register yours counselor login register yourself you may click it's a new you are a new user for that you have to do register yourself when you are clicking on register yourself, a uh, window will uh, appear like this. Here, enter your PAN number first. Is it visible to you? You can see, no? Yes, it is yes. visible, madam. It is visible. Okay. Yes. Okay. You are understanding what I am telling? Is it clear? Yes, clear, madam. Clear. Okay, thank you. So, first you have to and your PAN number. No other user ID we can use because this is the only unique ID. Cannot be replicated, cannot be duplicated like that. So 
for making it a unique id we are asking and for for further processing also we need this pan number so all of you may please enter your pan number here as id again you write the pan number for confirmation then uh, your name then your father's name date of birth gender your email id mobile number and a password that password has can be decided by you yourself they will give the instruction here again you confirm the password and uh, a code is given like a captcha that is that you, after giving that captcha you can submit so you understood this is the first step you are registering yourself in the environment portal to get an a user id and password means we are uh, on whenever we are doing some online registration or online application form submission this is the first procedure as usual so after that uh, you will submit it with all these credentials then another uh, video will be opening there it will show your pan number name all then you will at the same time you will get a password in your email id this is just an example i am showing you you will get a password in your email id and that password uh, temporarily it is given you can change it this using this temporary password and the unique uh, id user id you can log into the portal here that is the page here you can put the uh, same pass pan number then the already given password already shared password through your email id can be utilized here again a code is given as captcha then uh, type it and log in now you are a registered user here and you can log in after clicking on this login you will enter to this portal this is the uh, sub links of the portal now you are in the portal this means you are in the portal so new application the second column is giving uh, showing application status you are a new applicant so this is relevant for you no need to click on this click on this new application when you click on new application we will get another window for agreement so some terms and conditions are given you agree for that and continue again at first the state detail state regional center code our regional center code is 14 14 kochi that is what their uh, program code means which program you are selecting for being empaneled for example if you are trying to get empanelment in ma sanskrit you click this is i told you this is a screenshot you cannot click on that but in the real portal there is selection option and uh, drop down menu will be there from there you can select bachelor of arts bag or ma sanskrit or ma or like that you can select your program so program details it is then for to which study center you are going to be empaneled i think uh, there will be a difficulty there uh, because this is uh, for uh, when we are practicing it then only we will understand in which center is there if you are giving if it is um, essential uh, or mandatory for selecting that study center at that time uh, you please call us we will uh, rectify it i didn't experiment it because this panel is environment portal is meant for already established study centers i think if it is not mandatory you can simply Uh, skip it and go through and select pro courses here it is clearly given courses this is school of humanities your courses are under school of humanities and uh, you may select the course means several courses are there one academic counselor can select six courses at a time so beyond that you cannot so select six courses from the list given as per your choice your interest and your experience or uh, uh, the course of, uh, you have studied at your uh, master degree level like that you can select 
you select six courses by clicking like this and after that you can continue continue to the courses save so many courses are given at a time you can do for one program that is also a thing so you have to find out you select as many academic counselors means for one academic counselor six courses are there so one program uh, for sanskrit there are uh, ma sanskrit there are uh, eight courses so one academic counselor can select six courses another academic counselor can select the rest of the courses or uh, a repetition however it is but uh, whatever it is eight plus eight means for one academic counselor there there should be two academic counselors each for one course so we may consider there are 16 courses means 16 by 6 that much academic counselors are needed means uh, if three academic counselors are there i think that is sufficient uh, two academic counselors for uh, six courses another one academic counselor has to be there for another six courses and one more academic uh, you can uh, mix with courses and uh, three if three academic counselors are there I think uh, that will be sufficient for almost all courses of one program, having eight courses. Like that, you have to decide academic counselors for both the master degree programs uh, and uh, this uh, certificate also. So for certificate course also, there are only four courses. So one academic counselor for um, these four courses, another academic counselor for again these four courses. So if two academic counselors are there, they can uh, select this. Usually, in the established study centers, people are uh, processing this one by one. Once, uh, once at a time, they will apply for six courses. After getting approval, again they will apply for another course. But there, here, we don't have that opportunity because we have to establish. So, prior to the establishment, we have to show we have sufficient number of academic counselors for all courses. So, at first itself. You have to find out separate academic counselors. Otherwise, you cannot uh, process it. Because for, at a time, only one program can be processed. Courses of one program can be courses, uh, processed. That means six. If uh, an academic counselor is wishing to have academic counselorship in another program also, they can do it after getting the environment for the previously applied one. That is also so. Uh, for this particular situation, we may find out sufficient number of academic counselors means two each for each course, for all programs. That is the criteria. Like that, you have to select the courses. Now, the step two for personal details, you may uh, 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 view this area also, please. Because first area is over, now it is second area. Here, uh, all personal details are given almost given already given things will be appeared here rest of the things we have to give our uh, official address like that next uh, residential address and all these things will be there in the next slide uh, after finishing this one we will go through educational qualification details see here educational qualification details you can give step by step one thing you have to uh, put in your mind that what all uh, options or academic uh, qualification details you are giving you have to upload the evidence certificates proofs so better to give always essential things essential things means um, for a name clarification and everything you can give your SSLC then your uh, graduation they are asking if you are giving 10 plus 2 graduation post graduation your PhD or uh, other thing fill and other things you have to upload all the certificates for proving these academic qualifications we have already uh, submitted. Like that, it has to be got. So, additionally, if you have any additional qualification, that also you can do. Uh, PhD details you can give. Then uh, experience also, employment details, teaching experience, research experience, professional experience. Then details of last five articles published. Uh, conferences are presented if you have otherwise no problem if you have 
I think uh, almost all people are very much, all academics are, all um, faculties are very much uh, qualified and uh, your credentials can be given like this and uh, you can add your, uh, add new means, uh, this is for entering the next quarter. Like that you can give all your academic qualifications and after uh, giving all that details, you can, already I have told, courses and your course details, everything we have, teaching experience, this is, then the area for uploading of your credentials. So after giving your employment uh, details, education qualification, research publication and other details, this is the area for uploading your photograph and signature. So keep all the documents scanned, including your photograph and signature. And it should not exceed 100 KB. That is the condition they are taking. So all the uh, documents you are scanning and keeping on your uh, computer or your system should not exceed than 100 KB. It, is, it should not exceed 100 KB. So keep everything ready. Then you start your work. Then in one stretch we can finish our activities. That is the thing. So, if, uh, the clear photograph, a clear signature, everything. Then they are asking for signature pan card also. So, your pan card also should be uploaded. After that, it will show like this all the. Here you can click and verify whether it is clear or readable or visible. If it is not, please cancel and upload it. Otherwise, uh, it is not visible like that. One comment will come from the school and they will ask for uh, rework. So, uh, you, clear, you ensure the uploaded documents are very much clear. It is uh, readable. It is uh, visible like that. After that, you can again go through the, uh, the page. That window will show like this. And uh, you can see it after downloading. Then... Again, it is for uh, uploading the documents. Documents means education, qualification, certificates and all. So, what all things have been uploaded will be appeared like this. And here, documents have to be equal to 200, 200 KB. And photographs and all 100 KB. Documents uh, less than or equal to 200 KB. That is what the suggestion given. And it should be in JPEG or uh, a PDF. JPG, JPG or PDF format only. That also it is clearly given. Mandatory things are given here in brackets. Other things are also. So after carefully reading all these uh, instructions and guidelines given, you try to upload everything. After uploading everything, a preview provision is there. We can preview the first things, uh, first uh, the things from first onwards like this. All the personal documents the uploaded things, everything will be visible like this. So if it is needed to edit, that edit provision is there. If needed for editing, you click on that, edit, because after final submission, there won't be any chance to edit. That is why. So edit and then again give. Verify everything. Go up to the last portion see everything is okay then after once it is confirmed everything is okay final submission you can okay this is the procedure for uh, doing it after doing it the first slide i showed you there you can check i'll show you there it is See, after submitting it, not immediately after submission, but after uh, at least one week or something, I think this is uh, in special consideration of headquarters. So definitely they will process very soon. So after uh, four or five days or one week, you please check the application status. There you can view whether it is uh, processed, whether it is approved like that. If shown approved, you can download 
the approval order and keep it with you as the proof forever that is always a prerequisite for you to engage with the coming academic counseling sessions means the further processing when we are engaging we are engaging with academic counseling sessions that should be a process for uh, remuneration and uh, other uh, formalities of financial formalities of the retail asset so these are the thing i have uh, i had uh, to share with you regarding the online empowerment i think uh, all of you got that process processing procedure if you have any doubt i will uh, clarify that let me stop my sharing here while we are waiting for some clarification actually as per the policy of indira gandhi national open university keeping in view with the government of india initiative uh, we we use the platform of orientation program to share about the nep pdp program of igmo because it is under the uh, nep 2020 implementation so i just uh, uh, quite quickly go through it so that it will be useful for you all hello yes ma'am any clarification yeah i'm just uh, picking it up ma'am one second narayan sir ah uh, yes please that uh, in in between uh, i want to ask that uh, dr dhanesh uh, is one of us that uh, is asking about the yoga courses so can you please uh, explain about oh, that okay okay okay, okay. that okay. because in the yeah yeah courses please one please second, please uh, sir, yeah i will i will yeah it is there Sir, ma'am, gets back to you with the yoga uh, course I solicited. I thought I'll just share about the NEP PDP program of Indira Gandhi National Open University. This is open to all faculty. So uh, the CSU being a central university and the faculty are eligible as such to join. And this comes under the National Education Program. Uh, the the sorry the national education policy professional development program under pandit madan mohan malviya national mission on teachers and teaching by igno it is offered in the swayam and uh, uh, it, it is interesting that after 2 years we are talking so much about the pdp because that will enhance our understanding of what the 2 years has traveled so even if you have done some other pdp program or fdp program professional development program or faculty development program it is apt that you enroll for this nep uh, professional development program also so when you uh, look at the uh, um, uh, portal that is http igno hyphen nep hyphen pdp samarth.ac.in it will come like this and the uh, procedure to uh, log in in hindi english tamil and malayalam are available in a, uh, the regional center coaching youtube channel and you have to you, uh, use the login um, icon that is the uh, the sixth one on the uh, one after registering so if you are a new user you have to register first that's the last icon the one before is the login which you have to use it after you step into the program and create a new user id and a password and when you uh, enter the swayam portal it will look like this and so it talks about a brief about the various resources of how, how this nep 2020 can be and this 36 hour training program spreading across 6 days how it will help you what what are the resources you can get access to upon uh, enrolling for the program has also been documented in the welcome page and the co there are four modules in it the foundation structure access equity 
and uh, the Bharatiya Gyan Parambara. The second module talks about the curriculum teaching, learning, and assessment. The, uh, the third module talks about technology internal, uh, internalization uh, and uh, the how the research and regulation uh, regulations how how you can internalize that is how you can take it to your own indigenous knowledge to international level so both the things you have to think it when it comes to local relevance and thinking at the global level so this module will share about this and changing role of faculty and governance and leadership as you all seen this uh, um, nep 2020 has a new component of accountability or valuing somebody's integrity. So that also is there. And it will give you a start date, the course status, the, the duration, and also the level that how it is continuing. This is the first batch started on 6th September 2021. And now also the uh, program is open. And you please enroll and be benefited. The PDP program, the learning outcomes is also uh, spelled out. So it is mainly the highlight is NEP 2020. Now that after two years, it has become into implementation stage. How effective you can take it uh, to the field level and how you can facilitate multiple entry exit. All are related in this PDP program. And uh, there are videos also. So the videos will look uh, for Below the fourth module, the videos will be there. And then upon completion, there will be a certificate given like this. Under Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching. And friends, when you are listening to it, when you are enrolling for any program, professional development program, one key message you should check is whether it is under Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching. Only then it has become so more uh, relevant as per the NEP 2020 guidelines. So this uh, NEP 20 uh, PDP program of IGNU is being offered under Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and tra uh, Training. And then this, uh, these are the various links which are available in the uh, playlist under NEP PDP in the IGNU YouTube channel of Kochi, and it is available in English, in Tamil, in Malayalam and Hindi. And please be benefited by watching this. And the play, the separate playlist containing all the videos which are in the Swayam portal, the various Swayam Prabha live sessions, which are part of the integrated PDP program has also been put so that you can look at it and be familiarized. Many of the things, because NEP 2020 is already in vogue, you will be knowing much more about it. But do you have the certification? That is the question which will make you to enroll into the NEP PDP program of IGNO. So with this, please, I request you once again to visit our YouTube channel of IGNO Regional Center Coaching. And also, please note the registration link of NEP PDP, uh, which is given in red color, the ignu nep pdpsummertacin And with this, once again, felicitation for you all to, uh, to join us uh, into the IGNU system of uh, being a empaneled academic counselor. Thank you, one and all. And uh, about the um, the various program, actually, I uh, even in the uh, Sanskrit University uh, orientation program, uh, which was held last week, uh, many of you were interested in other programs uh, other than that. What is uh, what has to be launched? So that is what. If you are listening to the previous presentation, the prospectus is available free of cost and it can be easily downloaded and the nearest LSE for the uh, Sanskrit University is the Kerala Varma College code is 1407 and so and using that co co course code the learner support center code the, le the students of the Sanskrit University can enroll for the programs some of the programs which will be useful are certificate in human rights, certificate in disaster management, 
and certificate in functional English. Because when we are touching about language specialization, a, a communication language is also needed. And then the uh, related fields, uh, the family education and uh, the aids and family education and also the guidance, certificate in guidance. So ask the learners to concentrate on small courses, which will be beneficial for them. It will be easy to complete when compared to long duration program. Over to uh, uh, Dr. Jalja Kumari, who has already shared her slide about the certificate program in yoga, which uh, one of the uh, participants has elicited. Over to Mark, please. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And sir was asking about the courses. I will show you uh, the courses. So these are the courses under uh, CPY, Certificate Program in Yoga. Total pro 16 credits are there. First course is BYG1. And uh, that is BYG1 is Introduction to Yoga and the Yogic Text. Yogic text. And second paper, uh, second course, BYG2 is of four credit. That is Yoga and Health. And the third course, it is of eight credits. It is highly practical oriented. That is... Um, Shadha Kriyas, Yogi Kriyas, Asanas, Pranayama, Mandra Japa. These are the uh, areas coming under this uh, BYG L. L means love. Love means practical. So the last uh, course means BYG L1 is a practical, highly practical oriented. The whole things are practical only where uh, you have to make the students practice in practice. Um, uh, for uh, Shadha Kriyas, Yogi Kriyas, Asanas, Pranayama, Mandra Japa, etc. This is the um, syllabus for or the courses for the uh, certificate program in Yoga 16. Sorry for uh, not totally telling it along with the other programs. I forgot about this one. Thank you very sir, much, is madam. It clear, sir? Thank you very much, madam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, is there any doubt regarding the processing of embannelment that also can be asked now? Dr. Dhanesh also is again asking is the practical will be online or not? Practical will be offline only. Offline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. At the study center? And then, uh, I request you, Madam, I request you to just kindly WhatsApp that uh, slides that you have shown already here. Necessary links. Necessary links. After the event, after this program, I will collect from all the first person and I will send it to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think a little bit clear, no? Everything? <laughs> yes, yes, madam. Yes. Then uh, everybody will be able to do it uh, uh, through their system. Are they? Sir, uh, even though if you feel any difficulty, you can call us. No issue. I'll be online. Sure, madam. Call sure. me. Sure. We'll help you. I will we'll just help you to select all these things. Uh, uh, for entering the credentials also. If you feel any difficulty to select courses, that also will help you. No issue. Uh, Madam, I will share that uh, your WhatsApp number to all these uh, counselors who are want to register online. No issue. No issue. Please, sure. sir. Please. Because you have that Thank already, you. no? Thank you. Please. Thank you. Tartima, can we complete it? Yes, ma'am. I request to Murli, sir, to give the vote of time. Okay. Thank you, madam. Now the orientation program is going to wind up. See, the duty assigned to me is to say a word of thanks to all. First of all, I thank to our regional director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy, for the inaugural address. I thank Dr. Prasida Unnigrishnan, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, Dr. Jalajagumari, madam, for handling the detailed sessions during this meeting. Regarding student support services, evaluation, academic counselors, empanelment, etc. Thanks to all the staff members of RC Coaching, those who are behind this program. 
I thank to all the participants of Sanskrit University, to uh, those who have joined today's meeting. Once again, thanks to all the participants. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much, all. Thank you very much. I have given my number here in this chat. Please note it down for all. Uh, this is my number usually used and uh, WhatsApp number also in this only. You can sit and uh, we can write it. So once again, thanks all. Now I think everybody can leave. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you madam. Thank you all. Thank you. Madam, we can close the recording. Dorothy, ma'am, we can close the recording also.